Well done. We all hope indeed that you will get this fight, and what's more, we all hope that you'll win it. Thank yeah. you very much indeed. Thank you. And now from Southampton, I return you to Peter Dimmock in the studio. We're coming up to the end of the 12th. Can Erskine survive it? It doesn't look like it. Right out over the bottom rope. For in a few days' time, Chicago is to stage the heavyweight championship of the world. And there are many people among the three and a half million inhabitants of Chicago who think that Floyd Patterson, the champion of the world, is going to walk into his own private slaughterhouse when he enters the ring to face the big, black, lumbering, and frightening Sonny Liston. You asked me, was Patterson ducking me? Mm -hmm. Only thing I can say, he hasn't never fought me. So what would you say? Would you, do you think he was ducking me? Right on the bell. The bell has sounded. And he's up at about three, Clay. That was the end of the fourth round, and he hit him about two seconds before the end of the round. And now, finally, a word from Harry Carpenter, who, of course, will be here keeping an eye on the boxing for us. Well, of course, the vital thing in the boxing, Frank, always is the draw. And obviously, if you can get into the easier half of the draw, then you've got a very good chance of getting through to the semi-final. And if you get to the semi-final in boxing, you're absolutely certain to get at least a bronze. Walker's eye bleeding again. A crisp one, once more, under terrific punishment, and he's going. Six, seven, eight. He's up at eight. Well, we've got David Coleman's, we've got David Coleman's voice, but um, we haven't got any race, I'm afraid, at the moment. Something's gone wrong with our VTR, uh, visual tele-recording. Uh, so for the moment, uh, we can't show you that race, but uh, let's see if we have anything. I haven't any other news to give you, I'm afraid, so uh, let's hear from upstairs what we're going to do. The, I'm in touch here on my defo with the control gallery, and everybody up there, I can tell, is in a fair old panic right at this moment. <laughs> They're wondering what what we can do. Primo Carnera gave me the last long interview of his life. Here in Los Angeles, he'd finally found a little happiness and could look back without anger. Does it mean that you're generating so much power now from the engines that, in fact, you've got to have this sort of arrangement, otherwise the thing is just going to take off? Well, I personally don't generate that sort of power, but the... Um, the, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, well, I have my moments, but... Uh, <laughs> he's done it! He's done it! And he's got the gold medal! Chris Benningham has won the gold medal at middleweight for Britain. The first... Well, that is not far off the 18th green, and Arnie Palmer's looking astonished at the length that uh, Sanders has achieved there. At least I think that's what he's looking astonished about. He must have got that driver almost shoulder high then, uh, Harry. Uh, <laughs> he's really trying. <laughs> Nicholas has this to win the Open. Oh, he's got it! He's got it! And that's it. And that settles it. He threw the club up, and he nearly caught Sanders with it as it came down. And there it is, it's over. And Cooper gives him a pack, and says, well done, and he's given it to Buckner. He's given it to Joe Buckner, and I find that amazing. He's given it to Joe Buckner, and Cooper has lost three titles. <laughs> Harry, listen, I'm so modest, I can, fit my, I can admit my own fault. And my only fault is, I don't realize how great I really am. In fact, Ali, at times now, looks as though he can hardly lift his arms up. And I don't think Paul is going to get up. He's 
trying to beat the count, and he's out! Oh my God, he's won the title back at 32! Basically, the art of television commentary, it's totally different from radio commentary, but the art of television commentary is to say as little as possible, and when you do speak, to be as helpful as you can. I mean, the conditions really are, in my opinion, totally treacherous, and how anybody can throw it rounded, revving all the time, accelerating all the time. I keep thinking, oh, I thought we were going to hit that tree on the left. Steering is only one part of Cox's job. He's the boss once the race starts. He watches for mistakes, bullies the laggards, raises morale, and has two stopwatches strapped to his knees so he can time them as well. And now I'll make the final confession. It took me 20 minutes to steer the last two or 300 yards back to shore. It really is like being in a rocket at ground level. As this terrible tarmac keeps sweeping towards me. While sitting here with me at the ringside is Frank Bruno himself, the man who beat Jameson three years ago. You must remember that, Frank. Seems like yesterday, Harry. Yeah. Bruno's face already heavily marked, but fighting back, and he's hurt Tyson. He's hurt Tyson. And Tyson knows it and he's going for him. What a start to this fight. Now, if you want to know where Harry is tonight, he's in New York collecting an award as International Sportscaster of the Year. Harry Carpenter is the special guest at the annual American Sportscasters Hall of Fame dinner, collecting an award that pays deserved tribute to a very distinguished career. But now, the 105th All England Championships have come to a close on time and hardly looked possible at one time. But how much worse it might have been. Suppose we'd had all that rain this week instead of last. Now that would have been a problem. Would you believe it's just started to rain again? Good night. But that was a shock for Peter Richardson in the closing moments of this final. And again, the right hand of Winters gets through. And again, he's through. So, as we come to the end, there's no doubt the Northern Irishman is closing the gap, but he's left it late and probably too late. There's the bell. I like to say that you're not as dumb as you look, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, thank you very much. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs>